So, Kajit, you've had a very successful college career. Uh, what were some of the highlights in the, in, it was three years, but you got an extension, four years because of COVID, is that right? So everyone normally gets four years and I did five because we got an extra year because of COVID. Highlights, of, I got two individual wins, which is pretty big. Um, and then finishing up my team won regionals, which is also a really big deal to, to get to the national championship, you have to be in the top four at regionals. So to get a win there was really gratifying for us as a team. And I think it was a great way to end my, my college career. But it's a bittersweet end now. College days are, are done. They're gone. Going forward, the dream, which I know has been a dream for, of yours for many, many years, taught you since the age of three, and I know that during your teenage years, just before your, your venture into America, the dream was always to play the LPGA Tour. So that's the next step going forward. And how do you go about doing it? Yeah, so, I mean, co leaving college is bittersweet. I always said if I could do another year, I would, but... I feel like I'm ready to play professional golf. Starting in about a month, I'm going to go play LPGA Q School, which is three stages between August and December. And basically there's certain cuts to make and that advances you to the next couple of stages. And by the end of it, if you make, make it to Q Series and get into the top 40, you get conditional status on the LPGA. And your date's going over with you now for the first stage. And that's obviously some moral support and, and he's going to caddy for you as well. Yeah. So uh, let's hope that that journey continues. But he's only there for that first stage. Thereafter, you're sort of on your own for that journey going forward. Is that right? I think we're, we're kind of taking it one step at a time. Um, me making it to stage two, I think I would really want either my dad or maybe my brother to come over. Mm. Uh, just so that I don't do it alone. Mm. It is, I would say that those are really tough weeks because it's a lot of golf and... Sometimes you play three different golf courses, so you have to play three practice rounds. So it's a really long week, um, and to do it with someone would be a lot better than doing it alone. But that's the reality, right? I mean, college golf, you've got that teamwork, that camaraderie. Um, you're with each other all the time, practicing with each other all the time. And then, of course, the transition then going into the pro ranks becomes a little bit more solitary, a little bit more lonely. I know Maria Fassi had a similar journey. Uh, she was at Arkansas as well and then moved into the pro ranks. And I think that was one of the things that she noticed significantly in the transition from college to the pro ranks is that maybe lack of team support. I mean, eventually you'll have a caddy, I have no doubt, a manager, and you'll have a small entourage around you, but never the same as it was in your college days. Yeah, I mean, it's completely different. Playing professional golf, you're playing for yourself. And when you're playing college golf, you're not only playing for yourself, you're playing for your team, your coaches, and all the support staff and everyone that supports you. So it is different. As far as your game is concerned, how are you feeling about your game going into Q School now? I'm confident in it. I think I always like to trust my training. And in the last couple of months, I've been able to put a lot of really good hours in, especially with having no school. Um, especially coming home, spending time with you, and really fine-tuning the things. I'm confident in my game. And then also there's other aspects, of course, in preparation. The, the gym routine and the workouts, uh, is that on, on point? Is it the same as you were in the college days? Have you kept that discipline going forward? It's not exactly the same. I definitely don't go at 5.30 in the morning anymore. But I do do it three times a week and trying to incorporate things that are good for me individually, like golf-specific for me, uh, which has been good after leaving the college routine. And obviously injury prevention. Uh, have you struggled with any niggling injuries or long-term injuries or have you managed to remain relatively pain-free and, and injury-free? So about three and a half years ago I got tendonitis in my right wrist and that was just because I was hitting too many golf balls. Mm. Uh, so I had to take a little, I think it was a six-week break there. It's been a lingering injury but it's nothing that's ever prevented me from playing or practicing which is really good. And nutritionally, as far as food's concerned, are you, are you eating healthy, following a healthy diet? Are you fueling, the, fueling the, the body and you're keeping the energy levels up? Yeah, I think food is really important. It's where I probably get most of my energy from, and especially when you're out practicing for six to eight hours a day, you burn a lot of calories. So making sure that I'm eating enough, hydrating enough, it's really important for me to sustain my energy when I'm out practicing and playing. But especially with the heat wave that you guys are experiencing at the moment as well, I mean, hydration is, is going to be key. Yeah, the humidity, sometimes it feels like 40 degrees there. Yeah. And especially stage one of Q School is in California, which gets to about 45 degrees. So you're playing in it, practicing in it. So something to get used to and 
regulate your body to make sure that it's hydrated and has enough energy to compete. Psychologically, have you done any preparation in that regard? Yeah, so I really worked hard with a psychologist over in America since about January just to get me over the you know, the, the hump and transition of going from college golfer to a professional golfer. And I think it's just putting those practices that I've learned into play and I mean I've already I've changed a lot as psychologically but in the way I think about golf and the way that I believe in myself and I think it's something that's really helped me and was very important in my ending of my college career. Kajal, we wish you nothing but the best. We would love nothing more than to see you playing on the LPGA Tour and seeing that dream come true. Good luck and we'll keep a close eye on you.